What is up? Method Boy here with a special video that's been a decade in the making. Today I'm going to be showing you guys my 100 favorite EDM songs of the decade. And the reason why I phrase it very specifically as my favorite, because I'm not saying by any means that these are the best, these are the ones that will necessarily be regarded by the general masses, the general audience, as the best songs. Though many of the songs that are my favorite will fall in that category, but not all. There's some biases in the rankings, per se. I, did think, I, did, I think I did get a good spread of years, a decent spread of genres, but I'm picking favorites here. Though, even though the playlist is available below where you guys can just check out the songs, uh, what I hope to do with this video in particular is to sort of document some of the special things about these songs and hopefully that they don't get lost within the next decade because I think a lot of these songs should be remembered for being special, unique, and giving a unique contribution or um, achievement in electronic dance music. So coming in at number 100 is Fingerprint by Lane 8. And I picked this song in particular from Lane 8, even though over the past decade, he's been notoriously, at least on Reddit, as a guy that like doesn't miss, you know, he's so consistent, you know, he's just, he ne doesn't necessarily drop the, the fire, but he has a good um, comforting house sound that, um, you know, is a good, good it's, it's good um, palate cleanser, dance music, very consistent, like I said before. But this song in particular um, has a good does a good job of being emotional, but then also having that driving danceability. Um, I remember hearing the song at many, mostly openers will, will play the song, um, and it just stands out to me as a song that uh, should be cherished. And trust me, this this song fought very hard for the for the hundred spot. The hundred spot's a very tough spot to 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 make. So shout to Lane Eight. I truly appreciate this song. Number ninety nine is Street by Nightmare. This was, you know, at this point in time, two thousand I think fifteen. Yeah, two thousand fifteen. At this point, two thousand fifteen, trap was on the up and up, right? You know. Nightmare was just one of the players in the game, nothing too special, um, at least from what I heard. But then I heard the song at EDC, uh, a live stream. I think I think Diplo played it or something, and percussive trap. This is the best song. This is the best percussive trap song. The low end, super sick, dope sample. Just one of my favorite bangers over the past decade, particularly in the trap. The, the 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 trap arm genre. Speaking of trap, at number ninety-eight, it is Vincent's. It is Vincent Re and coming in at speaking of trap, coming in at ninety-eight is Vincent's remix of Allison in Wonderland's "You Don't Know." To me, this is. Uh, if, if you've heard my, my review of some of Alison Wonderland's other works, I like her voice, I like her singing, I like her vibe, especially the, you know, the interludes, the builds, but um, the instrumentation, especially around the drops, are usually underwhelming. This song has somewhat an overwhelming drop from Vincent, especially at the time this release was also 2015-ish. Um, and then you have one of the better Alison Wonderland uh, hooks that she's ever done. Just um, really great nocturnal vibe trap music. Gets me pumped, gets me energized. Number 97 is Alone by Marshmallow. I doubt you guys thought I'd be getting a Marshmallow record into this, but I am pretty fond of this, even though the high pitched vocal is can get a little bit annoying. I actually appreciate this drop quite a lot um, as far as the more melodic trap drops. You can call it Future Bass too if you'd like, but a lot of people copied this, and I think Marshmallow did this best, and this was actually a pretty interesting record when it came out. Looking at this album art, it, it looks pretty bad when you zoom in. I mean, in the, um, the, you know, the Spotify little thumbnail, really cool, cool art and idea, but 
zoomed in, it's a little a little dirty, but regardless, Marshmallow definitely made his impact this decade and this reason and this song is a pretty good reason why he at least broke through into that initial um, upper echelon of dance music, American dance music. Number 96 is Higher Ground by Tonight. Admittedly, I'm not the biggest Tonight stan per se. I appreciate the music they've created, the people they've influenced, um, you know, same deal with like Mr. Carmack and whatnot. Um, but this song has all the bells and whistles that I look for, especially in the era of 2014-2015. But this song has all the bells and whistles of a trap song perfected in 2012-2013, you know, before it really... This is when, you know, trap was on the up and up, and this song really helped establish that sound along with, you know, R.O. Grime and a couple other folks. This might have in pre predated, you know, the our grime stuff but regardless um one of the most excellent and uh, bangers of the decade coming in at 95 is alice by computer data now this is where i'm going to bring up uh well first of all this song is not very not the super popular song probably my audience is probably not very familiar with this uh, this song is under the subgenre of lo-fi house which kind of cropped it up in like 2017 2018 and just like many other subgenres lo-fi house i think the sort of um the sum of its parts is better than any particular track where um you know the whole vibe and the sounds and the little things that people do in between each record kind of helps make the genre so great um but the song sounds out to me because the bass line is very gooey um there's a very nice sample and it's got a shibu inu on the cover really like it for all mark really like it to chill out and i recommend everyone just to give it a listen if you haven't been exposed to any lo-fi lo house yet number 94 is night call by Kavinsky. You could say that this is more of like a electro pop record, not really dance music at all. Um, but it seems to get enough celebration in Reddit EDM and Reddit electronic music and so forth. You know, it's a normie enough record and normie electronic music is considered EDM. Um, and this song really started to drive the retro sort of 80s synth sounds back into, I think it's called Outrun um, dance music. Um, you know, this song and this whole album in particular helps establish that. And this song in particular uh, just has some really, really great uh, choruses and verses. Um, very good to listen to. Great record to drive to. And yeah, not, not much else. Good job. <laughs> this, this record's good. It's going to stick around for a long time. Number 93 is Without a Trace by Kill the Noise. Kill the Noise is, you know, probably top five sound design people from from this decade. But this song in particular is not a dubstep record, not a drum and bass record, not an electro house record. It's a future bass record that I think is goes is very underrated. Um, has some of the best arpeggios and um, mixing that I've heard in a future bass song. Um, and I think one of the detriments of the song is that it, there's a, like a probably like a at least a two minute intro. And a lot of people uh, in dance music, we have a couple other songs similar to this where um, you got you just have you have intro and then the build and then a big drop at the end and the song's over. Um, songs like Adrenaline by Zed and Gray. Another song I want to get to is D D Sharp Fat by Armin Van Buren. This formula, this uh, sort of sequencing, just kind of to the song's detriments, just didn't work out in making them more popular. Uh, but this song still stands out with just really crispy, great production. I don't know who did the vocal, but uh, the vocal is good too. So if you like feature bass records, definitely check out this song. Number 92 is Waste Time by Diplo and Autoerotic. Erotic. At this point, you know, bass house was, you know, it was popping off, you know, the 16 notes, basses, um, the vom, 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 vom with the slight pitch bend was going off. 
Uh, this song still just goes super hard though. Um, you know, just you, you just, just go to a club, any uh, you know high end pop and bottles club that still plays EDM. Uh, this song just goes off. I really like it as a club banger. Number ninety one is "Touched" by EDX. This is the first, other than Alice, somewhat, but this is the first uh, niche personal favorite record. It's just a progressive house track from probably like two thousand eleven, um, and just great vibes, great super saws, all that stuff that was cool in 2010, 2011, um, except there's no vocal, just straight instrumentation. You know, it's a four or five minute song, great vibes, good for gaming. Number 90, Flips, Drips, and Drops by Electric Mantis. This song has a really great showcase of what makes Electric Mantis so good and a lot of um, some similar future bassy SoundCloud producers where they used a really interesting groups of sounds at the time before Splice was had all these packages, all these these sounds in them. Um, you know, just very meticulous, interesting um, uh, aquatic sounds too. Um, yeah, I just remember, uh, you know, chilling in my college dorm room, uh, seeing this song with like this really cute girl on the, on the, the thumbnail and I was like, I'll click on this. And I'm like, gangster done. Um, I, this instant ad. So, um, stands out, you know, electric mantis, he didn't have the greatest output, but I think, uh, people are going to keep discovering him from years to come being like, wow, this guy was really special and is number 89 is miss masayoshi's emori's remix of positive by mr oizo um is this my favorite trap record of the decade it might be um this the original song is like an electro you know french house song by mr oizo might be called tech people might call it techno in europe but um, you know, that song in particular had a cool mix of samples of kind of like filtered um, funk samples and also this really like um, dark um, like French sample. Um, and Masayoshi Imori flips that with like some really dope trap drums, really cool sequencing. Um, one thing I'd recommend doing is taking out the bunch of sample chopping before the drop and just go from the snare build to the drop. You can just make a little edit. Um, just a very interesting, fun song. It's really just, that's a part of it too. I think it's just really great fun energy, but still goes really hard. Hard. Number 88, Propaganda by DJ Snake. Um, part of the craziest trap banger. Maybe other than Core, which we'll get to. And Yeah, some of the sounds in the song are so crazy. Um, it really carried a lot of DJ sets for like three years, you know, when people were kind of re-upping. Like, Propaganda's legendary festival trap banger, more so than Turn On For What, more so than all the other DJ Snake stuff. In my opinion. Ooh, this is interesting. Um, even though I made this list, I forgot what the song. This is the beach picnic version of Charles Gambino's 3005. Um, usually I wouldn't, it's basically an instrumental version of 3005, which is one of my, f you know, more favorite pop rack, rack, pop rap records of the time. Very peaceful productions. Got all these seagull, seagull beach samples going in and out. Um, it was just a good secret you know, hidden record that I came across and been playing it a lot. Very easy in here. Number 86 is Life in Grey by Point Point. Life in Grey stands out as one of the more interesting and innovative future bass producers, or at least that's like, I think they knew they were making future bass. They're like three French people. I think they were all, they all had separate prog projects and they saw kind of future bass um soundcloud stuff popping up so they decided to make their own effort but uh this song just has a really cool lead um cool vocal sample just dope vibes um very pretty pretty song 
Number 85 is Working For It by Zoo, They, and Skrillex. Um, I always thought Zoo was a great collaborator, and he's also just been putting out really great music since like 2014 or something. Um, but Zoo's sensual guitars and vocals um, goes really well with the interesting production from Skrillex and then the more um, rapidy verse from the lead vocalist of They. I don't know if the rest of They had a part in this. Um, it just sounds to me like a strip club uh, banger from the future, right? Um, just because it's has a lot of interesting trap vibes and and soulful vibes, but also that has that you know interesting production. Number eighty four is "Do You Don't You" by Haywire. Haywire is really known for his piano skills, his jazz instrumentation skills. This song doesn't really showcase that this that much except for uh, a piano interlude halfway through the song um but it just has this really cool rolling bass and the use again of the vocal sample just carries the song just a really bouncy fun song to listen to um Like, I don't think it really stands out at any point in time. It's just a really good song. And it seems to be a lot of people's favorites. Next up is Ultimatum by Disclosure. I was trying to think of what my favorite Disclosure song is, and I couldn't really come up with, like, the pointing to a singular song by Disclosure. Um, you know, they have all sorts of kind of vibes. You know, they've done a great job overall. Um, but this song has a lot of cool African elements into it, um, along with um, just a really great progression throughout the song. Honestly, the song could be switched for like Latch or some other omen, um, you know, fire starts to burn. But um, I think uh, this record going into, you know, old age, I'll still fuck with it heavy. Um, number 82 is Dim Frayed by Boombox Cartel and what I like about Boombox Cartel is oh Frankie okay ooh 82 Dim Frayed by Boombox Cartel this is my personal favorite song from the Boombox Cartel Cartel EP, which I think is the best trap EP, bar none. At this point, they were on fire, couldn't do no wrong, and this then they doubled down with this EP, and it was crazy. Um, yeah, a lot of great festival trap here. They just they just did their thing like crazy on this 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 EP and Dim Freight is a good example of that. Like who who else but Boombox would make drop like that? Number eighty one is Flashing Lights by Point Point. This is a remix of my favorite Kanye song, but Point Point did a really great reinvention of it, making it more playful, fun, and also adding a really dope violin intro. Uh, a little bit of a biased pick, but. If you like Kanye, if you like flashing lights, you're going to love this song. Number 80, Hey Brother by Avicii. This song, out of all the songs on True, the original True, not the Avicii remix that he did of all the songs, um, I think displays the sound he was going for really well. Um, country um, vocals with more instrumentative drops. Um, it just goes, gets off really well in the song. Great energy, very uplifting. Um, you know, basically all the things that Avicii was going for with this album he executed on. Next up at number 79 is Three Triangles by Hardwell. I couldn't think of particularly any one Hardwell song that stood out to me um, that has really, has, has a, that aged particularly amazingly like you could do um spaceman or um, apollo you know whatever songs came out in that that time 
Um, but I chose three triangles because it showed a side of Hardwell that he's really good at making house music. Um, and that was a really big surprise at the time. Um, so that's, that's, that's like, like this song is like seven minutes long, but the whole time you can just cruise right through it. it has a really, really great, um, progression throughout the song. Oh, I would, I'd recommend everyone to check this, this song out. Like I still think a lot of Hardwell fans don't know he might have made this song because it kind of opened your eyes to. It was just very. It was a very impressive thing for Hardwell to release this song kind of randomly, and you know me just getting blown away from it. It was a very cool experience. Number seventy eight is "Burn" by Cashmere and Dallas K. Um, out of all the big room producers, Cashmere and Dallas K, Dallas maybe. Um, these guys were like you know the. You collab with them, you're getting like a sick produced big house record. But they came together and made a song that carried on the Beatport chart as number one for like wick just crazy long. Because the song from a production standpoint is crazy. The B drop is one of my favorite B drops ever. Just a, a sick a sickly well produced. Just a really great um just a really well produced record. Just crazy well produced. Just you, you can't beat this, some of this production here. Number 77, Sudden Moon by Above and Beyond. Just one of the best uplifting trance records I heard. Um, kudos to the vocalist on the song. He did a couple records with above and beyond but this song takes the cake um you know i even heard this at like frat parties in college which is kind of weird so um you know just one of the, the the better trance records of this decade especially differentiating itself from um you know trance glory days per se um just gave a really good modern spin on um trance number 76 boneless by chris lake Tujamo and Steve Aoki. Another just really, really well produced record. Um, you know, Chris Lake has been putting out fire since 2010, um, but he came together with Tujamo and, and Steve Aoki, I'll give it to him too, um, to just combine sounds and make just a great uh, college banger record. Um, I think, you know, it got. A little bit too much play, a little bit too much publicity. Um, but to me, if you know things weren't marketed so much for this song, and you know it would be like a deep down low, something that everyone really likes, that's you know into dance music, but is hanging out with people that you know like more party stuff. Number seventy-five, "Calling" by Sebastian Grosso and Alesso. First Alesso song that I heard um, for sure. First solo Sebastian. And Grosso's song that wasn't related to Swedish House Mafia, and and the uh, Ryan Tedder vocal I think is something that everyone fell in love with the second they heard the song. You know, this song was like sitting on YouTube with like you know a two probably like a three sixty p photo of this album art. Um, not the best quality at all, but uh, everyone was freaking out about it. Um, definitely. Um, you know, had that 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 EDM anthem ear um, before things really started popping off with all these other anthem records. The song was, I think, the the first. Number seventy four is six 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 by Getter and Gasly, and this song is one of the more interestingly produced house records by by anyone and. It's just super cool, super wacky, super fun song. Um, yeah, man, Gasoline Getter just just killed this. I, I still think here the song sometimes like, wow, this is nuts. Like I don't know who started what, how they got. They just wanted. To, I think they just wanted to make a crazy s song, and they they pulled it off. Definitely stood out from the worldwide broadcast. 
Ooh, number 73 is MK's Remix of Electricity by Silk City, featuring Dua Lipa. MK, you know, has been doing the piano house remixes for the this whole decade, but this song stands out to me just because Dua Lipa's vocal, I think, has been a gift to uh, dance music civilization. I think she does a really, really good job with those vocals, and it matches really well with MK's buttery piano house production just a cool uh summer house song number 72 gala Matias and alina baraz have the song fantasy which is not only a great you know get it going in the bedroom kind of song but then also just really really in interesting production if you haven't heard the instrumental in itself it's like crazy crazy good um so I really appreciate this. Um, Gala Matias, you know, among other artists like Flume that could make more um, sensual and interesting um, songs, but also still keep it interesting in a production way. Number 71 is Flickr, Porter Robinson. Number 71 is Matt Zoe's remix of Flickr by Porter Robinson. Again, um, in this situation, Matzo essentially takes one of my favorite Porter Robinson songs and just turns it up to 11, especially with that second drop. Um, you know, just flexing production prowess here, um, but also still maintaining what was so great about the original Flicker, which is, you know, it's all about blowing up in your face and going up to light speed. And all those feels. Number 70 is Pursuit by Geschaffelstein. Um, you know, a lot of people attribute Gishalstein for bringing back that techno sound, that French acid techno sound. Um, and this song is just a banger. The second it comes on uh, with that bass line, it's, it's a scent. Number 69 is Nocturne. Oh, Pierce Fulton. Number 69 is Pierce Fulton's remix of Nocturne by Eden. Now, I always liked Eden's vocals. I always thought, though, Kind of like Alice in Wonderland, the instrumentations never were quite, uh, you know, S tier level. Um, but Pierce Fulton serves that S tier level production right on up. Really um, crispy, lovey dovey song. Very beautiful. Number 68 is Matzo and the Knox Get Down to Get Up. One of the better sort of. I guess you'd call it like French disco house songs to come out. Um, Matzo has a number of these, but this song in particular just is so happy, so joyous, so bouncy. Um, really, really enjoyed this song for, for quite a long time, especially the summer that it came out. Number 67 is Without You, The Rebirth by Dylan Francis and the incredibly enormous dinosaur Z. Um, you know, it's kind of slipped under the radar, I think, um, just maybe because Dylan Francis's fans are more into Moombatone, Trap, and uh, more banger stuff, but I thought the song was very, very beautiful um, with the incredibly enormous dinosaur's vocal, Dylan Francis getting into his, his Progressive House anthem bag with this one, um, with the Rebirth version of it. Very beautiful, very emotional, if I do say myself. Uh, just a great sleeper song that I still cherish to this day. Number 66, The Champ by Wolfgang Gardner. Time will tell if this goes higher up in the list or drops off the face of the list because uh, it's a pure banger. It's a little bit repetitive, but it is like... It, it's... it's If if this song would, would manifest as something, it's literally, you know, the the pyrotechnic nuclear smoke cloud in the in the background of this like it's an explosion this song this song is an absolute fire lava spray explosion everywhere it's it's such dope energy the snare is so so crispy just great energy great opening track to this this um, particularly special album in my uh, coming up into learning about dance music um, weekend in America but we have more Wolf and Gunner later, so we don't need to control on that one for too long. Number 65 is 
RAC's remix of Maybes by Giraffage. Um, you know, this, this song doesn't too much retain Giraffage's playful style, um, but, you know, RSA just brings a nice, um, kind of like a tourist or um, a Kasi sort of um, produced, you know, house record. Just very floaty, very um, freeing and fun song. Kind of like uh, Fingerprint Palette 8, sort of a palette cleanser. Um, just a great chill record. Number 64 is Clarity by Zed. Now, this might be on a lot of people's top tens. Um, I have fond memories of this song listening for the first time because I think it's one of the best produced Progressive House anthem songs. That's why I think partly, particularly why it became so popular. Um, but I don't have like too much affinity for it now. Um, but, you know, it's impressive. It's good. I'm not going to knock anyone for really liking it. Still number 64, beat a lot of good songs. Number 63 is Cut to Black, LeMay, the instrumental. Piano house record, um, just crispy, crispy piano. Very, it, it just goes well. I was played, I played for people, people like, oh, that's really good. What is this song? Um, and I guess it's just because the chords are good. Can't explain it. Number 62 is Chicken Soup by Abstract and Skrillex for you know the past year two years abstract was making this really crazy bass house music um remixing for a lot of ausla records to maybe even released uh ep on on ausla but then they during peak bass house season ausla had the house law uh house ep and this is by far abstract's best best record this I mean, the second that first bass hits for, before the drop really starts, um, it's just a full send uh, anywhere you go. This song's gonna be played for a long time. Really good club record. Um, very addicting sample. Number 61 is Secrets by Kashmir and Tiesto. Damn, I'm really like a production dude because this song too is like, the second half of, of, of the drop is, they somehow managed to take an 11 to like a like a 12 as far as just how loud it was how how crazy the this 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 song is um the pre-drop is particularly stands out to me um just a very effective um you know musical freedom type big house club record also really popped off for cashmere so i'm happy about that number 60 mammoth by mogai and davichi meg Div the Dimitri Vegas and like Mike. Um, what's good? What's good about DVLM and and Mogai and on Mammoth is, um, you know, it's, it's at the time it was a it, was, it still is a pretty unique big house song. Um, you know, there's no vocal to it, but still it popped off hard at Tomorrowland and all the the people that that watch soccer and listen to dance music. Um. Yeah. Just gives you that. Just gives you that that feeling in your stomach and in your chest. Those those butterflies. Um, the first time you hear it. And I think it'll continue to bring that that sound for for forever. I think it. They they hit gold on this. Clearly, it was it was huge. Number fifty nine is Shades of Grey by Oliver Heldens and Sean Frank. I remember seeing this song first played at, you know, I think it was Ultra Music Festival, like 2014. Um, it was just after it rained, you know, it was all wet, but the sun started to come out. Then Alf Hound's like, I got this new record, Shades of Grey with my friend. Ah. Um, and it's just a, such a great, great house vocal, so addicting and fun to sing along to. And then the drop has a nice little filtered synth. Very addicting song, uh, very palatable. A lot of people I know that have showed the song enjoy it quite a bit. Number 58 is Light Years Away by Oliver. Um, Oliver stood out as, again, had the very unique sound, sort of retro outrun style, but, you know, 
they they didn't go too far into it they try to keep it like modern but still have so that that retro feeling uh the song's drop is really really cool um it's all about it it's just it's it's the vibe it's the timbre of everything it's the style it's very very cool number 57 mumbai power by skrillex um i mean i think for a lot of people that are really into dubstep skrillex at some point became like the goat at that like oh my god his production is untouchable um you know i, I kind of feel that um a little bit um but I always thought it was like to the mixing, not so much the sound selection. But this song has like Skrillex's best sound selection and that super good mixing and production. Um, just probably one of the. I think it just capped off the all the future bass trap, um, melodic trap records to come out. This song just like at the very end of the decade, Skrillex was just like boom. All right, best one. I have the best one. Haha. <laughs> bye. See you guys next next decade because. No one's beating this. No one's out producing this song. No one's out vibing this record. It's short, sweet, great at festivals, great in the car. Number 56, How Deep Is Your Love? Calvin Harris and Disciples. The Disciples. Number 56 is How Deep Is Your Love by Calvin Harris and the Disciples. This was, you know, when the Deep House pop radio records were coming out. And, you know, you didn't think Calvin Harris had it in him. But again, he found the best vocalist um, or the best vocal that I guess the Disciples had hiding away. And was like, you know what, guys, let's just make a smash. Let's make a radio smash here. Um, the song, very addicting, but also has that emotion that you want in a good house song. It's right here. It's the vocal, really. Production under it's fine, but God, the vocal so so buttery. Ooh, that's not loading. I hope it's loading. Number 55 is D Sharp Fat by Aaron Van Buren. This is the song I was talking about where it's intro into drop and then the song's over. Very epic trance build into a crazy uh, drop um, that might be annoying to some people. It is just like a, a pitch rising saw, very high pitched, almost like a um, an Azar trap so song. Um, but... I do think the ends justify the means, especially with how crazy the, the build is to this song. Um, and then it pays off this really cool kind of big room house trance, you know, R and Van Buren 2013 style drop. Very crazy. Really. I, I still think this would go really, really well in a lot of um, festival sets. Number 54 is one of the, I'm not a Zombie record, the best Dubs, festival dubstep record i think out there throwing elbows by space laces and excision you know the song um, similar to some other songs at the time you know had the you know the metal band uh interludes um but the song had a really really great sample and the drop is just nuts space laces is always kind of popping off in this way but this was like super pop off like this drop is nuts just crazy trap arm and headbanger banger song number 53 castles by sudden death is you know to me like a, like if dubstep goes to the arena level which i don't think it can because it's not going to make commercial records this song is like arena level i think the intro synths are so anthony and, and huge and the drop is so so sudden death it's so i'm gonna knock in your skull and rip it out and as i do that there's like blood splatter like in, in in the staircase on netflix you know just a brutal record drop such cool sounds the second drop you know is more like a you know trap style but it's like got these like spacey um, phaser sounds so it sounds like you know you're just blasting off in the space just sick vibes sick sick sounds just so cool Number 52 is Shot Caller by Chami. Kind of uh, an under the radar, radar song for Chami because at this time he also was doing like the Janet Jackson remix, the Aluna George remix. Um, but this 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 uh, bass house song still goes hard. Um, just a good mix of sounds. It's got that dark dog bark sample. 
very very uh, addicting fun to listen to good car record 100 percent number 51 different sound by g jones now uh i couldn't think of the exact g jones record where i converted to be like all right this guy is the future he's a god um, but it might be this one the song is like two and a half minutes long pretty straightforward um again he's just showing off his his production skills more namely his ableton like automation um skills with putting a different like edits to uh each like to bar to bar just really really crazy record um and just very artistic and expressive number 50 this is what you came for by calvin harris featuring rihanna probably one of the, other than like what's the song with Ariana grande with zed it's like this is the part when uh this is like my favorite uh song to sing along to on the weekend when i'm a little bit too much in the bag um it's really fun to listen sing along to from beginning to end even the drop is you know just a great sing along record very fun record i don't take it too seriously um but i do enjoy it quite a bit number 49 show up by virtual riot um, by the time this EP came out, I heard plenty of Virtual Riot songs because he was, you know, he's always kind of been lurking slowly, uh, you know, rising, you know, in the disciple ranks. Um, and, you know, everyone's kind of saying, you know, he's, you know, Skrillex level, he's um, Noiser level, he gets, he's just the sound production super god. Um, and you know, I was skeptical. I was like, you know, he, he does have good skills. His streams kind of showcase that quite quite well. He has he had like a couple sample packs too at the time. I think like, it was established he was good at sound design. He was a sound design dude. Um, but this song is like, damn. He he is he really proved himself as that sound design dude. Um, like immaculate sound design. There's a bug in my house. Is it a B? How is this even possible? I haven't seen a bug in my house in like two months. That's that's Winners of Massachusetts for you. So, um, yeah. Craziest production. It's kind of like a drum and bass record on the special in the second drop. I kind of wish the interlude was less spacey and, and kind of long kind of really just listen to the song for the drops but the drops are so so good and crispy that i'm willing to ignore it and put it at number 49 above all those songs because the production is so sick it's it just gets me so hyped so hyped number 48 deep down low by valentino khan the second this drop hits again you're just gonna you're gonna start making some making some faces. I remember listening to the song on SoundCloud randomly in my dorm room, and just being like, "Okay, ad." Within like two seconds, I was like, "Ooh, that's that's an ad." Very very effective house record. Um, very catchy too. You know, if you don't like bass lines, if you don't like you know EDM stuff, it doesn't get you dancing and going. You know, you can still just say deep down low, D D down uh, E uh uh. So fun, and you know Valentino Khan's been kind of carrying off. Like, I feel like every song, most songs after this song, you know, he's been kind of just trying to recreate this sound or just kind of cruise off it. Kind of like how, who's the Hexagon producer? Does the same thing. Um, Yeah, I'm not, I can't think of the dude's name. He has a song with Zonderling. Um, you know, before then, you know, Valentine Cobb was doing like Trap and the Jungle stuff and whatever, but this song you know, changed his career forever and sits very highly on this list. Number 47, Feel the Volume by Jaws. This song pretty much kicks off the 16th note bass house train. Um, this song, again, a very, very particular day. I was listening on YouTube. It just hit me like, okay, this drop is insane. Um, I remember hearing the song at EDC and it is even crazier. Like, it seems to resonate really well with people and that's why everyone else copied it. Um, it kind of gets me thinking about, you know, what songs get copied might not be on its like popularity. Cause this song, you know, was more popular than other EDM songs, but not super popular, but so many artists started copying it. And I think it's because it was so crazy in, in the clubs. Um, yeah, super fun song. Uh, we should didn't have that like 
interlude drop where everything slowed down in like halftime, but what are you gonna do? Number 46, this by Oliver Heldens and Sander Van Dorn. Criminally underrated song by Oliver Heldens. Um, I mean, it's a little more spacey, but I think this drop is so cool. It's got that, the two things that, you know, were signature Oliver Heldens at that point, the triangle sub bass and that, you know, mallet pluck sort of sound with the reverb on it. Um, super danceable song. The second drop's got a cool riser. You know, it's it's got like this, it's all over homes with like a little techno-y kind of flavor. I like it a lot. Number 45, Wizard by Martin Garrix and Jay Hardway. I couldn't think of any particular more mainstream Big House song between the Hardwells, the Show Techs, um, and Martin Garrix. Um, but I think this song is my favorite. Um, you know, particularly at this time in dance music, if you're at a festival and you're like standing between two say, stages and you guys are talking about where to go. And then on one side, you're hearing some song and then the, the other stage, the main stage, more likely you just start hearing wizard dropped. It's, it's, it's hard to argue to go anywhere else. Like so crazy festival song. Um, um just amazing low end in production. Like even if you even, like, I don't even like Big Room House really at all. Like I don't have any affinity for it, but this song just goes so hard. It's so fun to listen to. Um, really great for cars, particularly if you have a good sub bass. Number forty four is Miracle by Madion. Um, you know, I think this song is interesting because it, it it has like you know, it's it's solo, you know, soulful French house. Um, the vocal intro by Madion is catchy it wraps up the decade pretty well in the sense where it's you know you know this thing's ending we got to move on um i wish i could stay but i can't well you know we'll, we'll come back and at a later date and we'll catch up and i like that sentiment i think it goes really well with the the hopefulness of the whole record the upliftingness but um also i mean um What else, what else is good about this this song? Yeah, it's interesting how you know he, you know he's he's singing that intro. Um, he's doing all these effects on his vocals. It sounds kind of like Sophie. Like it's very purposely, I think, computerized and high pitched and a little bit um, abrasive. But I like that 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 touch he did. Um, and then you know the guitar plucks during the drop. You know, dunk, 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 dunk. sound sound extra crispy on the the vocal chop lead. Um, you know, it, it's, it, it, it was very close to giving me goosebumps. Very, very, um, great groovy record. Number 43 is Nishio 2 by LeMay and Giraffage. To me, this song does a really good job at, you know, taking giraffe, giraffages, a more playful, um, you know, I call it like puppy EDM. It's like, you know, it's like, oh, it's so cute and precious and like almost too cute. Um, with LeMay's, um, you know, just really tight production. It's kind of hard to explain. Like, LeMay just has a production style. This song kind of combines the two. It's emotional and beautiful. Um, and, you know, it just gets me in my feels. Number 42 is Thrill, Porter Robinson remix, Namely, by Nero. Um, you know, I really enjoyed to see the Porter Robinson live show grow, but then also, like, the tracks that come after it. For the world's project um it was just a big surprise i didn't think of that usually people when they drop like their biggest record ever they kind of just kind of sit on it but i was happy we got this remix really out of the blue um because it's, it's absolutely bonkers um the mixing he did for the drops is very interesting unique makes it sound really loud it's almost like jarring to hear um You know, I've, and I've always really liked Nero's vocals too. I always think, um, like even even down to the 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 piano outro, the song is from beginning to end like so peak worlds for me. It's great. Number forty one is Bipolar by Matt Zo. This song came out in two thousand eleven. And this is like the very beginning, in my opinion, of Matt Zoe's run all the way through Pyramids and so forth. 
um, of me just, you know, you know, every couple of months, a new Matt Zoe song will come out and it's like, damn, this is a slightly, you know, a new sound, new genre, but it's still Matt Zoe. Um, this song, the interlude, it's like one of my favorite dance interludes ever with the cutoff saws and the, those really nice chords. So yeah, really just kicked off all the great Matt Zoe songs to come after it. Um, and also it's one of my favorite Andrew and Beats records. Number 40 is the M-Machines remix of Lucid Dreams by Matt Zoe. Um, you know, I think the M-Machine did a really good job at carving out um, a lot of unique kind of left of field dance music records. Um, always kept things interesting, but this song in particular kind of threw up the song. It goes between like dark and mellow to hopeful and super beautiful. And I really appreciate that. It's just really a journey of a song. Um, and it takes, you know, everything that was great about the original record and just M machinifies it. Number 39, Wolf by Dairo. Now, this song was kind of the last hurrah from my memory of Electro House. Um, at this point, kind of everyone kind of left the game, Wolfgangarner, Porter, everyone, just whoever that, whoever else. Um, but Dairo was put his flag down, was like, no, I'll stay. And this song is the first of that, that effort. Um, and it has a really cool acid synth lead um not it's just wall-to-wall -wall nuts production it's two drops the first drop aggressive banger electro house the second drop is more melodic progressive house and god it's just a beast of a song you know, it was so impressive that darrow made the song when he did because because things were kind of over for electro house number 38 is one kiss by calvin harrison dua lipa this song we're gonna be hearing in Whole Foods for years to come, <laughs> for for better or for worse. Um, just such a smooth record. Calvin Harris, I think, got the fire in him again to make electronic music records, and this is the outcome, which is so cool to see. Where you have an impassioned Calvin Harris, you get, um, you know, it's retro y house record. Um, yeah, play the song a bunch when for the, for the you know throughout that. That, that whole spring semester. It just works in a lot of context. Love to sing along to it. Ooh, number 37 is Rebound by Artie and Matt Zoe. Probably my favorite trance record. This is my favorite, yeah, you know, this is my favorite trance record. Um, what can I say about trance that hasn't been said like a thousand times? I mean, Artie and Matt Zoe have a couple of songs together. Um, but this song has just a particularly good build and, and uh, you know, interlude. Um, and the payoff is just great. Artie saws. It's it's really pretty self-explanatory. It's Artie and Matt So together. Number 36 is Beautiful by A.G. Cook and Rusty. Now, um, you know, A.G. Cook and his, his folk, you know, have been doing some, you know, left of field electronic music songs. Um, not all of them are my favorite to listen to. Um, I mean, I think it's interesting to have a more dystopian, futuristic take on like pop music. Um, but you know, not always my thing. But this song in particular takes that you know ultra catchy um, kind of pop um, vocal that Ag Cook created, and Rusty just blows it up with a great um, melodic trap uh, instrumental. Lady hits like a ton of bricks. Um, the 808 is huge. Um, just stands out as my favorite Rusty record, and Rusty has a lot of a lot of great great songs. Number thirty five, Angel Voices by Virtual Self. Um, I think what we see here in this song, in particular, is a Porter Robinson that is creatively stimulated, and also for some reason I don't know why he decided to produce his butt off in the song. Um, like even if you just took the first like four or five minutes of the song, you'd still, you would have like a complete, like super amazing VIP. And then for like the next minute and a half, he just screws around and does all these other like drops. It's almost as if he just had a couple extra loops in his FL studio, just messing around. I was like, yeah, you know, I'll put it at the end. Okay. I'll put this at the end and just keep doing that. And yeah, you know, send it. Um, 
and I mean, Ghost Voices later in this list, um, believe it or not. Um, and this was just probably the best VIP that I've ever heard. Is that is that justification enough for number 35? I think it is. Number 34, Core by L. Grime. Forever. The greatest, greatest trap banger. I mean, it's just, it's, it's so good live. It's, it's just, everything about it is, is, mwah. that's, that's all I can say. I mean, I, I mean, I don't think I'll be doing this with too many records in my top 34. Um, but it really is. It's song just goes so well live. So good. It's so many different audiences and crowds. And he did it on his terms. This is not a sellout track at any means. This is Argram doing all grime and crushing it. Number 33, Five Hours by Dioro. Dioro, you know, establishing his panda funk sound with, you know, a very kind of mousy, chopped vocals um, with nice, bouncy basses. Um, had a number of these kind of songs, but this song in particular was just the most addicting, the most earworm sort of record that he had. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, a lot of popular records had, like, you know, the starting slow in the beginning tempo and slowly speeding up the tempo until it's, till the, till the, the tempo's there. But in this song, it's iconic, you know, that that slow build in the beginning of the song just adds a little bit more tension um, than as if it just came in with the drums from the start. Number 32, Kill Everybody by Skrillex. This song is the first track on my spotify for a good reason i remember being introduced to scary monsters and nice sprites um at, at in middle school <laughs> this is 2010 right yeah this isn't this is no way that this is before that so this is in this decade my friend showed me scary monsters and nice sprites i was like yeah you know i was i was in like hard hard style at the time so i don't dub step me I appreciate it. I looked it up when I got home on YouTube. Then, you know, related thumbnails was Kill Everybody by Skrillex. Clicked on that and, um, you know, my musical tastes have never been the same. I think similar to the music I was listening to before, the hard sell records, you know, just four on the floor, you know, a lot of different sounds cutting in and out. And it still holds up still holds up i mean reptile steam is another good example and some other skrillex just remixes at the time um but the song holds up the best out of all of them and you think with like a cheesy like i want to kill is is kind of too cheesy but it still goes off it's it, it's still hard number 30 <laughs> number 31 undertaker by wolfgang Gunner. another electro house record that this song I think Wolfgang Hunter just just nailed it. I think the uh, set of loops that happen in Electro House song, you know, became formulaic after this point a little bit because of this song in particular. He just crushed it with how things are the sounds seek are sequenced sequenced, and then it also has you know Wolfgang Hunter's crazy um, synths melodies and harmonies. Like it's it's godlike. Number 30, Gemini by What's or Not. Um, this is one of those SoundCloud records. Those, these are one of those SoundCloud rec records where I heard the first drop and I added it right away because um, between the vocal and the crazy, um, the lead is just like so huge and like juicy and and one of my favorite things about the song is the uh, hi-hat pattern is like super sick. Like it goes super well with all the other parts of the song. So like, like a lot of trap records um, and melodic trap records, you know, they just have like the 16 or the 32 hi-hat. But this, this hi-hat's like peppered in there and it just makes it so saucy. Really great. Really, really great. Like it's vibey, but it's also um, hits like a ton of bricks. Number twenty nine, tied up by Mord Fusting. Um, one of my favorite progressive house sort of songs. 
like the the the, the build takes a while. I mean, but you, you once you get the the gist of you know the vocal lead and all that, the, and then the the drop hits, you're just bouncing for like a minute, and then it goes to interlude again, and then you're bouncing for another minute, and then the song ends, and you're like, wow, that was crazy. There was no vocal in that. There was just really really great um, vocal. Like I don't even think vocal like Progressive House was really popping like that, and this song kind of blew me away in 2013. Especially when people were listening to like Lick the Rainbow by Mord Fussing. I was like, guys, Taito. Number 20 is Flicker by Port Robinson. For a long time, it was my favorite world's record. I um, thought it was interesting that he chose um, the sample of, you know, someone saying like, um, you'll find your way. Some like reassuring quote. I forget at this point. Very interesting. Um... It was just a, it just, the, the set of sounds he selected for this song were very interesting. Like there weren't like saw, like there wasn't too many saws in it. There weren't too many, um, like purposeful structure. Hmm. What do I like about this? This is difficult for some reason, guys. I don't know. It's, um, I'm gonna bring up my leg. Leg's coming up. So... It just got. It's. I think it's just feelsy. I think it's. I think it was just emotion that Lord made of this record. I mean, it has that huge sound like a lot of other world songs. Um, I think there's one more world record on this list, but Flicker Forever. Number twenty-seven with you, friends. Long drive by Skrillex. If you don't like vocal chop leads and you think they're annoying and silly, you're not gonna like this. But this is a great um, display of how Skrillex is the best at it, actually. If you didn't already know, um, you know, just slowly builds with all these crazy uh, piano runs, um, you know, just displaying Skrillex's musical prowess, but also how that adds in this very emotional record that ends with a nice four on the floor, um, little bouncy dance stuff. Um, and it's very feelsy because by the time the song ends, you know, you get the full, full uh, sample played all the way through. And it's like, I don't know, it's very sad, but. Um, the journey to get there, you know, was all the all the worth it. Number twenty six is okay by Madeon, Madeon. My apologies, and I know there's a typo on the slide, Clarence. But um, this song is my favorite Madeon record from that like four or five song run at the beginning of Adventure, which is like such a great run of songs. Um. Yeah, the beginning of this 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 album is so sick, um, but this song does that like really hyper bouncy sort of stuff that you know is pretty popular like on Monster Cat and stuff. But somehow Midian has Madion has been able to make that sound very endearing and pretty. Um, yeah, I guess I really think it's just the sample. It's, I think it just makes it very very warm with on top of it being very, very groovy and bouncy. Number 25, Fall You Down by Zen and Bright Lights. According to Spotify, I've listened to this song more so than any other electronic record. It's possible. I think, um, you know, Clarity gets a lot of credit, but this whole Clarity album is great front to back. And this song is like, you know, a sea anthem because Zed's, this album's so stacked. But this song in particular, uh, Just get, gets 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 really. I mean, I think bright lights is a is a good analogy, even though that's the vocalist and not any other indicator. Um, it's just it's it. Yeah, might be just really well produced progressive house. Not the craziest record, but feels like home to me. And bright lights has carried a lot of records this decade so i'm happy she made it in number 24 cry just a little by the bingo players um this song reminds me a bit of like french house filter house um kind of updated to like 2010 2011 where you know it's really all about the sample that was very catchy i don't know if it is like 
a sample sample in the sense that I was a previous record. But really, it's 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 that repeating. Oh no, with uh, you know some nice under underbelly dance um, instrumentation by the Mingo players. Much much better than than Rattle. That's that that's also my my dig for putting it in. Number twenty three is Sleepless by Flume. My introduction to Flume changed changed a lot for me. Um, probably my favorite song from the Flume um, debut record. And again, I think, damn, I didn't know so so. Um, I don't know if I don't know if I was so biased towards just great vocal sample usage, but this is another example of that. Number twenty-two, "Young and Beautiful" by Cedric Gervais and Lana Del Rey. Um, I'm a sucker for sixteen-note basses, and Cedric Gervais has one of those in the song. Lana Del Rey's vocal is really great. Industry plant or not, um, one of the great anthems. I don't know why there's an American flag behind the spinning label, but hey, you got to take with what you get. Number 21, If by Janet Jackson, K. Trinata's remix. Really showcases K. Trinata's signature production style with one of Janet Jackson's most infectious vocals. And yeah, best R&B remix of the decade. Number 20 is Gosh by Jamie XX. How do you sum up this song? It's it's first of all, it's the intro to this this whole record, and the song is throughout throughout the song. It's just going up like this, very slowly. It's a it's a it's like a garage jungle, you know, record. And it, again, this song more than the other ones. This this is some of the sickest sample work ever. I've never heard samples like this used in this way. Um, and it's got a nice boom and eight oh eight under everything that drives the song. It's it's a complete entrancing piece of work. From beginning to end, um, almost godlike, pretty much, pretty much a god, god level song. Miami eighty two by Sin Cole has like this very interesting signature eighties production, um, and I've never heard Sin Cole make a song like this or anyone else. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the second you listen to the song, you're like, okay, this is unique, this is new, haven't heard this before super catchy and why isn't there more of this why why was this the only one sin oh was it ghost producers i don't know but the song damn damn i mean from beginning to end you, you you know usually people live for the drops for this but this song had like a really cool like talk box kind of bass in the in the interludes it was so so good number 18 phantoms can't hang by dead mouse very interesting use of trance elements and I believe big house elements to create this progressive uh, house song that is very subtle but it's to me it gives me the feeling of like taking off on an airplane and you're just slowly going up and you, you start to see the clouds and you get through the clouds and you get through you see the stars and you just keep going going up and then you level off and then you can start going up again and there's like subtle changes in the um, the lead sound where it's like starts off like a plucky, you know, animals kind of lead, and then it slowly gets to be more of like a, a saw lead with like some maybe some reverb. Like again, haven't heard anything like it since, and it was very interesting for demos to make this song, particularly on this record where it was mostly like acoustical like abstract kind of stuff. The song was very concrete um, and really functional for, 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 for the clubs in the, the festival. Number 17, Alive and Part of the Sun, Zed remix. This is Zed's best festival record, um, best record in general. Pretty, yeah, I mean, it's perfect. First drop, aggressive electro sound. Second drop, anthem, melodic explosions. 
Uh, I think he's still had success with this for a good reason. Um, you know, Empire of the Sun has been remixed a hundred times, you know, super popular on the festival scene. Um, but Zed put his imprint on this one and it, and it comes off super, super great. I don't know why on Spotify I get this trash album cover, but um, it's, 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 now, it's now the Alive Empire of Sun album cover. So that's what we're getting. Number 16 is ten- Flume's remix of Tennis Court by Lord. Future Bass. I want to say Arena, but like, you know, big concert hall vibe song. Really cool from the beginning. I mean, you, like, Flume's like intros and interludes are like usually really minimal in his remixes, but somehow he still managed to like, set such a vibe. I think it's just he picks really good vocals that aren't like instantaneously known to be super emotional and vibey, but. He, he does. I mean, he makes this song super infectious. And the drop, this drop is like, you know, everyone's getting on each other's shoulders for this song. This song is like the encore flume song. Number 15, Next Order by Dog Blood. Skrillex and Boys Noise come together to create um, my favorite Acid House song of all time. Um, god level production um i think of strobe lights and a dark ass concert venue when i think of this song it just matches it just matches the dog blood vibe so well it, it's it's violent and aggressive turn up to 100 god like production can you tell i'm a little tired a whole lot of dance music to talk about. You don't don't do this in all one take. But number fourteen, Cthulhu Sleeps by Dead Mouse. Haven't heard um, a use of a drum loop in this way, where it's like a much longer drum loop with different like claps and snares and effects and it repeats. Um, but it makes it super danceable and unique to me. I think, like all songs from four times four equals twelve, the mixing is really great, especially on the low end. Um, you could substitute this song with Bad Selection, but I think the song is even more unique, more interesting. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if other people that come up in the Dead Mouse camp really like this song. Like I, I imagine Red, this is probably one of Rez's favorite records. I think um, you hear, I don't want to go off too much of a tangent here, but you hear some of Rez's leads, her basses, and I'm like, I I think she heard Cthulhu Sleeps and was like, I could, I could do some of that. The song's not for everyone. I mean, it's a long interlude, and it's a pretty minimal drop, but it's very unique without without being too full of effort. Number 13, Pop Culture by Maddion. So at the time when the song came out, you had two things really popular on YouTube. You had the Launchpad. I don't even think it was... Launchpad, the Launchpad mashup stuff wasn't popular, um, but mashups were, like, matching up, like, all the songs of a year. And... Maddion not only made the best of one of those, he made the best of both at a very young age. And so how he managed to do that is he somehow established his own sound within, you know, that those spans of months leading up to this song. And yeah, I mean, he started the launchpad craze, but he also ended it, in my opinion, because I didn't want to check out any other one because this was the best by like a, a mile and a half like he he captured what makes pop music so great you know it's uplifting it's moody at times it's beautiful um just really uplifting and i think um Maddion's thesis on what music he likes to make and wants wants to to promote all starts here i think the music he's he made is just a furthering of what he was trying to accomplish with this this mashup um and that's really impressive and, and interesting as a, as a story number 12 divinity by porter robinson the intro track to worlds second this i mean this is like to me the best worlds song among all the copycats and all the songs Paul Robinson did from beginning to end 
is just so catchy. Um, the interlude, it's got like, you know, the, the music box with the vocal, the female vocal that, that is, that is so worldsy because it's just, you know, it's very slow. It's very, uh, ominous and not too specific, but feelsy. You just capture everything you need to do in the, in the song. And, and then, you know, there's three drops, which is pretty cool. Each one's a little bit different. You know, it's just, it's just emotion explosions. <laughs> Can you tell I've been, I've been, I've been, I shouldn't have done this all at one, one go. Number 11 is Levels by Avicii. Do I really need to talk? What's right? What's like the unique take on this? So, I mean, I have not asked other producer people about this, but this song very clearly uses um, Nexus preset um, like sample leads, but it comes off so well in this song. Like you can hear like the percussiveness and the the cutoff of like a lot of these, and it's like these they're like crappy artifacts almost, but it makes this lead sound so unique and cool because he was. I don't know what the word would be. I mean, I don't think he... It's interesting. He didn't take this song that seriously. When he kind of just put it up, he was like, I don't think it's that good. But um, clearly it caught on um, with me and many others. Um, this song, more so than any other, I played it like obsessively when it came out because um, I couldn't believe what my ears were hearing. It's, I guess it's, it's the catchiness, but it's also, I think, um, there's an emotional excitement from it too. Number 10, Send the Paint On by Chrome Sparks. Now we're in the number 10, guys. So now we're like, these songs are like perfect cash money. Wouldn't change anything about them. Send the Paint On by Chrome Sparks. Um, super gorgeous. Almost almost sounds like you're, feels like you're, I don't know if it's like you're dying, but you're like passing on to another dimension, a new, new realm. It's, it's, it, it, it's the feeling is like bigger than life itself. I don't know how you make such an emotional, beautiful record, but then also, you know, he opens his sets with this song and it gets people going. It, it's, I mean, it's the greatest antithesis, I think of Chrome Sparks production and style. Would like to get this on vinyl someday. Number nine, Space Jump by Wolfgang Gardner. Uh, Wolfgang Gardner's most godlike i've been throwing around a lot but you know that's what i like about all these songs is the production is uh just utterly cash money um between the drops here and the everything pretty much everything I like about undertaker except the space drum song has a drop that no one else has ever done been able to recreate with a sample that is no one else has really done before I mean, I'm sure Wolfgang are sick of playing this song because it is just an electric house banger, but you, you can't deny how good it is and how, how much Wolfgang are bodied everyone with this song. Number eight, Addicted to You, Avicii by Avicii remix. Now, this is my favorite Avicii song. Holds up the best test of time. Thought it was really interesting that Avicii um, uh, you know, had his commercial debut record, very successful, but still decided to make um, a dance, more core EDM version of each song. Um, and this song has one of my favorite Avicii drops, period. Um, essentially, it is that, you know, emotional, uh, true style vocal with more modern dance music style drop less so you know country instrumentation stuff that i don't want anything to do with i really recommend if you haven't heard the avicii by avicii album in entirety listen to it and particularly this song number seven quagga by pierce fulton now as far as all yeah it's my favorite progressive i just probably start pulling up the list so i stop being like, oh, this is my favorite, this, but it's really not. You know, it's got this, like, African, uh, you know, pagan <laughs> tribal uh, sample. 
just really great saws top-notch production damn is this is this is the top 10 gonna be less interesting than like the uh, the the first 50 as far as being me being like this song best production what can i say about this i can tell you about a song that time i've heard it above and beyond played it and you know they usually play trance and stuff that's more on juna but even though they were like yo this pierce fault and quagga track we gotta rep that us us British people got to play this Pierce Fulton song, and they did. Number six is Flume's remix of "You and Me" by Disclosure. Um, another example of someone dunking on an entire subgenre and everyone copying them or trying to, and not being successful at all at it. Um, you know, Flume's again on, in another sense too. You know. You and Me by Disclosure is not a very standout song from that, the Settle, Settle album, but also it's not even an emotional record. Like it's pretty average, like house, but Flume somehow managed to make it super emotional and um, have a lot of depth to it. And then on top of that is just genre bending production number five is omeo by darius this is my favorite song of one of my favorite of my favorite ep of the decade it's just french lounge house romance um you know subtle um house music nothing too crazy but this song to me and this ep as far as sound selection and the subtlety of things coming of all the little instruments coming in and out is like the closest to what Daft Punk did and a lot of like B-side songs on Discovery. Um, the sound of se selection and production is so crispy on this. And the progression throughout this song in particular is um, something that I can get lost in for, 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 for forever. It's so good. But you guys didn't expect that, did you? Ooh, Ghost Voices by Virtual Self at number four. I still don't know how anyone... You have to be a very creative dude to make this in 2000. I'll, put, I'll throw out 17. It's such a execution of what sounds Porter Robinson was going for with, you know, more like DDR-inspired Japanese... Um, inspired music that was out in like you know the early 2000s and but then he put it in such a such a such a modern um, I don't even call it modern it's just he made it work mo in a modern context like it, it, it was like okay um, you know I think there was a rule like all right yeah and how do how do I how do I put the, throw throw this one down? I think there was like you know it's just I think everyone kind of agreed. You, you, if you're gonna make weeboo ass f f electronic music, you're 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 not it's not gonna be popping off. It's not going to be anything more than just weeboo ass music. Um, but this song um, is the exact opposite. It's like the most inspiring, interesting. Um, effective dance record that year um, and just on a sound selection basis um, is is a, is a flawless oh, I should be looking out here it's a flawless execution on what he wanted to achieve sound fonts for lead crazy trance arpeggios Bouncy bass line, ominous vocal sample that I don't know what's saying still two years later. The song Save Dance Music. Might as well have. Number three is Sunrise, Time of Trash, and the Ash and Self Shuffle. There's actually um, 
a Time Trash remix of a song called Won't Get Lost by the Ashton Sh- Shuffle. That might be a typo. I apologize. It, this is the best Progressive House record. This right here. It's, it's arena-sized in its sound, but it's as emotional as they come and beautiful as they come. And Tommy Trash had a signature style, just like Kuaga, where it was like, all right, no one's touching this. You put it in the box, done. If you want to play it, you can. If you want to replicate it, don't don't bother. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna face palm. It's it's hard and it's hard to make like a, a moat around a sound in dance music, but the song Tommy Trash did it, and um, I really appreciate that. Number two, HR. 8938 Sefi by Dead Mouse. This is the best car record, guys. It's not Feel the Volume. It's not uh, Susu by Montel, who are the, you know, this is, this is the best song to play in the car. It's also one of the few songs that have given me goosebumps just because it is such a subtle, intricate ride from beginning to end. It's like eight, it's nine minutes at least. And ain't and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take from a comment that I was uh, and I was I was breeze going back through these songs. Someone was saying, you know, Joel has said, Dead Mouse has said, he doesn't get emotional making music, and this song more so than any other song. I'm like, how can you make this and be an emotional bastard like yourself, Joel? Like this is this is. More beautiful than most art I've ever I've ever heard. It's so subtle. I don't know how you can not feel when you when you're when you're making something like this. Like by the end, of, the time you're done with the song, you're like, damn. Like, feel it. It's it sucks you right in, and it keeps you there for for ten minutes. I don't know how it does it. And number one. My favorite song of the decade is Summit by Skrillex featuring Ellie Goulding. When people tell me their favorite artist is Elenium or San Holo or Drulu or any other, you know, melodic future bassy kind of kind of people, I assume they the feeling they get from listening to those songs is the feeling I get from listening to Summit by Skrillex. It's all feelsy, warm, and it's so big. Um, that it, it, it it's it's unforgivable and so unique to these songs more so than any other genre. It's like you can't no other genre could can do what Summit does. No other genre can do what the you know the future based people that other people like. Um, and Ellie Goulding was kicking ass at this time. She was on a roll, and I was very surprised to hear her on uh, an electronic record. Um, that wasn't, you know, a Calvin Harris song. It's interesting a lot of the trends on on these, on these all these songs here. I mean, this these two songs are progressive. This song doesn't have much of a progression. This song kind of does. This song has a progression. No progression. No progression. Progression, no progression, no progression. Interesting. But again, I think, I mean, first of all, these are, this is my list, guys. Make no mistake, these, this is the list. This is, these are my favorite songs. You're not talking me out of this. However, um, going through this list, I kind of realized that dance music, more so than other genres, is. I think it's still the sum of its parts that make it great. Um, you know, I think it's hard to nail down any one record as the best, though Summit is the best, guys. Also, I think Summit will stick stick really high up there. I don't think it's going nowhere in the next decade. I think Summit's, Summit's, Summit's secure to be really high up there. Send the paint on to Ghost Voices, Sunrise, 
Sefai are sticking clean. Wow. Damn, this playlist is good. Look at this juicy ass playlist. Oh my gosh. Like top 50, your top 50 is really great. Probably around like 60. Eh. I'd say after 60, you're getting, you're getting goats. 60 and onwards, these are goats. These are all goats for like, yeah, one, one to 60, probably the most diesel playlist I can make in dance music. The thing about these, these later records is, you know, these aren't my favorite. I appreciate them. I, they got, you know, cool stories behind them, but you know, they're not, then I don't know if they're all time, Ooh, but, but some of these, Ooh, crisp. Those are crispy. All right. So those are my favorite songs of the decade. Um, Billboard is trash. I appreciate all you guys for, for watching. Let me know what you guys' favorite songs of the decade are below. I'm looking forward to, to, to hearing those. Let me know if you hear any of the songs that I recommended. It's particularly the songs that you guys don't know at all and it's completely out of your comfort zone. That'd be really cool if you guys get into those songs. Because, you know, when you get a new sound, a new style, a new subgenre, it's a whole it's a whole new world to explore. It's a whole new little sets of artists and events and stuff. It's really fun. Really good stuff. So on that note, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I'll see you guys next time.